from jungle forests to skyscraper skylines. At Kuala Lumpur's center, one million residents. Here, business thrives. On the periphery, seven million others. Worldwide, more than a third of all energy is consumed by buildings and construction, an often overlooked fact. This is the first green building with a platinum rating in this township 40 kilometers outside of Kuala Lumpur, which is now serving as a blueprint for others to follow. Its principles were first applied by the architect Tan Lok Moon to his home. By putting the air conditioning from the floor up, it saves the building about 30 to 50 percent. We were so busy in Malaysia building the nation that it never hit us that we needed to also look after the environment. 2009, when we launched Green Building Index, was the year when everyone realized there was another way to look at things. And it also helped the bottom line. Your cost of operation went totally down. Old energy elevated this city. Future success may be more grounded. In the shadow of the Petronas Towers, a bamboo structure by award-winning architect Alina Jamil. We meet at this month's Festival of Architecture. We are slowly moving towards making natural sustainable materials like bamboo to become a standard building material to be used in buildings, in housing, in tall buildings, in skyscrapers. Responding to the climate is very, very important in a hot and humid climate like Malaysia. And you see that in the architectural education. You see students designing sensitive buildings which responds to the climate, which makes a connection with the local culture and local lifestyle. You're training the next generation of architects. Do they see the world differently than you did in your early days of study? The new generation might save the world. They understand that the heat gained through a house, predominantly through the roof, and all these are now gone into the curriculum. I have good hope that the new generation, they'll do the right thing. John Deftarius, CNN, Kuala Lumpur.